range, and we're looking, uh, every breeder is going to be a little bit different, um, but we're typically looking at 95 to 96 degrees is what our goal is. Once they are admitted, all vet students at NC State's College of Veterinary Medicine are required to take some coursework dealing with farm and large animals. For those in the Food Animal Scholars Program, the training is more intensive. We try to make sure that our students graduate with a good working knowledge of all of the major domestic species. We do allow some degree of specialization so that if they're predominantly interested in, let's say, swine medicine or poultry medicine or ruminant medicine, that we allow them to take more blocks and gain more experience in those particular areas so they graduate with a greater working knowledge in that, that, that area of choice. So we think this gives us the, the best balance. One thing unique to the school and an aid to large animal students is the school's teaching animal unit, or TAU. For most other vet schools around the country, large animal students have to travel a distance to get their on-the-farm experience. For NC State vet students, the farm is right on campus. At various times of the year, all of the food and large animal species import to North Carolina agriculture, from dairy and beef cattle to equine, poultry, and swine, can be studied. We're very fortunate that although we're here almost in the middle of Raleigh, we do have a working farm right out our back door, and our students are engaged in that working unit called the Teaching Animal Unit. Really, from week one that they're here with us in the first year, they have uh, rotations, they have experiences, labs out on that farm with all of the major agricultural species. So they see when these, these cows are uh, inseminated, it's all by artificial insemination, and then they go through their pregnancy, they see when the cows are dried off, and then they'll follow them until the cows calve again and they come back into milk. All of this education and training comes with a hefty price tag. Our, our students graduate with approximately $80,000 or so of debt and um, starting salaries are currently in the 60s so their debt is higher than their starting salary right now. Uh, it, uh, and as I said, we're relatively lucky. There are a number of schools that have very much higher tuition, thirty to forty thousand dollars a year in tuition, and those students are graduating with well over a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Some getting close to two hundred thousand dollars. It's tough to put money towards um, because you have uh, producer oriented. So we're trying to uh, give them a service as cheap as possible, as make it as profitable as them. So. It's one of those things, I think a lot of outside funding um, helps with the scholarships because you can't expect the producers to uh, pay us any more than what they are because we have to keep them profitable. There are scholarships, of course, including one that forgives a portion of school debt if the student, once graduated, commits to a large animal practice in a rural community. One of the things that North Carolina has done to try and encourage people into large animal medicine is uh, they've got a, a loan set up through the North Carolina Health Science and Mathematics and, uh, and that loan will, will pay me a certain amount per year to go to vet school and, and as a part of my agreement, uh, I agree to work in North Carolina doing large animal medicine for every year that I take the, take the loan. Most of the food animal scholars we talked with were focused on becoming rural large animal vets. Others were looking toward public service positions. It's nice right now with the uh, food animal practice that I want to want to get into. Um, I'm a little more open with the areas that I can go since the, there is a job shortage. There are, I mean, there are, they're looking for people. So I think I could start a practice just about anywhere, and um, time will tell. Uh, well, um, definitely, I plan on possibly specializing in therial genealogy after I graduate and get my DVM, which is study of the reproductive system, and I want to work with cows, so possibly bovine therial genealogy. If not a uh, specialty, uh, I would like to go in with government, maybe do food safety inspection. I, I like all food animals as well, um, so we'll see. I could very well end up in the poultry industry, um, or I'm also one of those that consider in the government route as well with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture, perhaps. Putting all of this in perspective. Less and less of the population really understand about the important work that veterinarians do maintaining not just agricultural productivity, the health and well-being of agricultural species, but maintaining food safety, public health, making sure truly that animal products 
are a safe when they make it all the way from the farm to the market to your home, making sure that the animals in agricultural systems are well cared for, handled in a, in a humane and ethical manner, uh, looking after the health of those animals so they're maximally productive, looking after the financial welfare of the owners of those animals. So, the next time you go to the grocery store, you might think about the people who produce the food you buy. And that includes the veterinarian who keeps the farm animals healthy and safe.